Our guest in this segment is the Jefferson County Commissioner, and he would like to return to the commission, Pasha Majdi, who will be running out of the Harpers Ferry District. Pasha, good morning. Thank you for coming in. It's my pleasure to be here. Harpers Ferry is home for me. Harpers Ferry is home. You, you serve on the commission now. I do. But under what district? Explain how this works. Charlestown, there was a vacancy. Ms. Ath, former mm-hmm. Commissioner Ath, resigned because uh, her family had an opportunity job-wise elsewhere. Right. Uh, so they took that opportunity. She resigned. They created a vacancy, and I was appointed to fill the vacancy. That was quite the dramatic filling of that uh, seat, too, I might add. It took a little while. Uh, so how how were you able to fulfill that seat obligation without living in that particular county? Or, sorry, um, sorry, district. Yeah, I, I don't know why that's the law, but that's the way the law is written. If there's a vacancy, you can appoint anybody, anybody. in the county. And another funny quirk about how county commission politics, campaign politics works is anybody in the county votes for all the commissioners. Right. You have to have residency to represent and to run in a particular particular magisterial district. That's the term they use. Right. But you vote for all of them. So this year, four out of the five spots are up, and all Jefferson County residents will get to vote for four out of five seats. But those people who are running in those magisterial districts have to live in those magisterial districts. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And as a commissioner out of the Harper's Ferry District, if you are elected to that seat, does that mean you first and foremost represent the residents of Harper's Ferry, or do you represent all Jefferson County residents first? It's all Jefferson County, but it'll have a little Harper's Ferry flavor. Uh, And as a resident of Harper's Ferry, and I live in the historic town of Harpers Ferry. I can tell you tourism is something that we care a great deal about. And as I've been going door to door the past few weeks and listening to residents, I, I keep talking about tourism as the feature of the entire county and getting a very favorable response. What is the status of the Hilltop House right now? And I know they had some things they needed to get through and approval from the Jefferson County Commission to help with the completion of that project approved and moving forward so we're very happy about that that's probably one of the three or four most important things we've done this year first we had to set up a government but once we got that taken care of hilltop was a very important vote we're moving forward with that that'll be was that a tiff yes a tax increment financing Mm -hmm. so uh, it's basically the way taxes work is the how your property is assessed higher the value, the more taxes you pay. And when you do a major development project, there's a huge spike in the assessed value. So the idea of a TIF is, well, if there's gonna be assessed value spike, there's gonna be a spike in tax revenue. Why don't we dedicate that tax revenue to the public infrastructure that goes along with the project and improves the community? That's what it's about. Roads, sewer lines, whatever. Exactly. Is, all, yeah. is what that's dedicated mm-hmm. and to. And in this case, the, the key thing here is a high-quality underground parking garage. One might, one might ask what makes a high-quality garage. If you're on a hill, ingress and egress is very complicated, and you don't want to send trucks with deliveries for a major commercial center around uh, small residential neighborhoods that were built in the 1700s and 1800s. Sure. It's, it's a disaster, frankly. So getting the garage underground such that trucks could go in and out and without going through those little neighborhoods, which I happen to live in and I know a lot about, is very important to maintain the historic nature of Harpers Ferry. So that was a big win. Not by the county commission. I can't claim credit for that. That mm-hmm. was actually Harpers Ferry, the corporation of Harpers Ferry, or the town of Harpers Ferry that got that done over many years of hard work. John. And low quality is a hard sell in general. Let's build low <laughs> quality under qua- underground parking. Is So it can collapse on you yes, when you enter yeah, in. Exactly. We don't want that, no. no. <laughs> so um, are there... Are the interests, are there the parochial interests of Harper's Ferry, the, the Harper's Ferry, <clears throat> Harper's Ferry the, that I think of mm-hmm. is the, the John Brown Tourist State, State Park, Federal Park? It's federal. Federal, federal Historic Park. Park. Yeah, it's okay. a national historic park, yes. Which is annoyingly difficult to get around in. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to park way down there and take the bus and, and, and all of that. But then there's the larger part of Harper's Ferry that where people live and, and, and work. So when you talk about tourism mm-hmm. are in Harper's Ferry, are you talking about expanding it into the more, the, the not federal park areas? Well, what I meant was 
I've got a tourism background living in Harpers Ferry, and I want to expand tourism throughout the county. We're actually doing really well on tourism within the Harpers Ferry area. It's it's actually leading the state. We're doing a really good job. There are 300,000 visitors. That's true. It's hard but to get in sometimes. It is. <laughs> That's the problem. Hopefully the garage will help with that, uh, which is one of the reasons we wanted to do the TIF. But we could do more tourism around the county. And what I'm hearing from residents is, you know, we didn't really like Rockwell. That's heavy industrial, and we didn't like it as a as a soft way to put it. They really didn't like it, right? We and, saw. Yeah, don't really like solar too much. But you uh, know, you can take the signs down now. <laughs> right. Toxic Rockwell. You I, really I, can take those signs down. I drive by those every day. <laughs> hey, they're still on message. Give yeah, them credit for that's that, true. right? Well, I'm also hearing light industrial. If you can call it that, solar. We're not we're not big fans of that either. So I'm thinking, okay, if you don't want to do heavy industrial, you don't want to do light industrial, are we just going to do housing developments? Because that's a, that's a problem. It's you a tax can't. loser. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's going to fill up our roads. You were just talking about that. Fill up our parking garages, fill up our schools. And how are you going to pay for it? The way you pay for it, if you're in North Virginia or Southern Maryland, the way you pay for it is by raising taxes. I don't want to do that. So what's your option? Do you have the ability to raise taxes as a county commissioner? We can. I don't want to do it, though. How so? Well... There's been talks of different levies, uh, and um, I, I'm but not. But you can't just raise the tax rate that's assessed on personal property, you, as a, as a county commissioner. Is that correct? We we don't do that. We have uh, an assessor, Ms. Banks, who assesses property value. But it, I'm just not interested but it, in that but across it, but the But isn't that set by statute the the amount that can be assessed? It's not in the discretion of the local county commissioners. Is what I'm asking. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in favor of it, and I think you're right that it is set by statute, but there's been lots of talks of fee increases, levies, et cetera, and I'm just across those. Uh, I'm against those across the board is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, okay. I thought those were limited to 3%. There's, there's a there, 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 the accessible rate is it can fluctuate very minusculely. I, I don't – you have to ask Angie – Mm-hmm. Someone else, the exact number. But, but it's but it's the it's, same county to county, though, is it not? Is yeah, it's a state right. law? Right, right. It's it's set by state what yeah. county commissions can assess. I, I think in having conversations value. with the Berkeley property. County Commissioners, yeah. it's capped at three percent a year, I believe. Yeah, there, there's a there's a little more to it than than that. So, um, but yes, okay, it, fees and stuff like that can be added on. Right. All right. So the point is for economic development, if it's not going to be taxes and if it's not going to be light industrial, solar, and and rock wool, okay, then what are you going to do? Well, I think agritourism is something that we could do. People like wineries. People like breweries. People like... could get a lot better in Jefferson County because right now all of your people in Jefferson County are going to Virginia across into Loudoun County to the wineries. You cross that state line and you see wineries everywhere. Well, what's the difference? It's not ecological. Mm Mm-mm. We have the same ecology, right? So the difference is policies, regulations, et cetera, that are unfriendly to businesses. And for whatever reason, we're not able to attract those type of businesses to Jefferson County. I want to change that. I want to bring that type of development that people are really happy about. Delegate Wayne Clark worked on some of those uh, changes this past legislative session. Have you ever met with him and talked to him about that? Not specifically about that, but I have a great relationship with Delegate Clark. I think he's... He, I think he's setting records in the numbers of bills he's passed. Uh, it's pretty impressive. He's been efficient. Yeah. yeah, you might want to talk with him about the wineries and such because I, I told him this when he was on the program a half a year ago or so, and that is uh, my wife and several of her high school classmates got together at Harper's Ferry for a bit of a reunion week, and they went to wineries and whatever, and I said, oh, where, where did you go? And they were all in Virginia. I said, well, you were in Harper's Ferry. Weren't there any in West Virginia? No, different different access. Well, you can't you can't uh, really do the wineries in West Virginia the way you can in Virginia. To to sum it up in one sentence, if you want to go to Harper's Ferry Brewery, where mm-hmm. do you got to go? Loudoun County. Yeah, you got to go back across the state line. <laughs> that says it all right there, doesn't it? Yeah, that's got to change. Absolutely, because Jefferson County's. Well, you got you got two natural gifts in Jefferson County for tourism. You got the casino and you got Harper's Ferry. That those are two pretty big. Yeah, you know. and Shepherdstown has has a nice little draw as well. Mm-hmm. Hard to argue the tourism there. When we talk agritourism, as opposed to Rockwell, comes up a lot because it's really the only big factory that I can think of that's that's in Jefferson County. Um, and it came up in conversation, I guess, on on Monday. Uh, well, when I was here, the um, 
what is it, 150 employees up to $39 an hour. Um, so there's, there's that type of tax revenue with relatively minor impact on roads and what have you, or agritourism, where you're getting tax revenue a glass of wine at a time with a lot of impact on roads and, and such. Is that really? Is, and service is that, jobs. And service jobs. It's kind of, it's not apples to apples. It's, it seems to me that it's an entirely, it's, it's a, it would see at, at first blush, and I've done no research on this at all, but just looking at it, it seems like it's a much less efficient way to try to raise um, tax revenue. And we're still bringing in people from outside the state who will drink their glass of wine and go back home to the other state. So we're still building houses here for people who are working outside the state. That, that's going to continue. That's, uh, it's inevitable considering we're at the corner of three states, right? But you're right. Industrial is the best way to raise revenue for a local municipality. Financially, industrial is the way to go. Catches, voters don't like it. And I respond to the voters, so I'm listening to them. Now, I, I'm not going to be unfair. Uh, I'm not going to disrespect people's constitutional rights. I'm not going to break the law. We've had some of that recently. But we're <laughs> not work out well. We're not going to do that. But if we're trying to attract the types of businesses that the voters are asking for, I think agritourism is the future, and not just agritourism. Let's have some weekend get. I mean, the hotel is not agritourism; it's tourism. Mm -hmm. Let's ha let's make Jefferson County the weekend getaway for families and residents of D.C., Baltimore. Come here, spend your money, stay at a hotel, have a good time, go to a few restaurants, and then go home. Once the Hilltop House is completed, will that not? Uh make what you just said eminently more possible oh absolutely but i i don't think i think it's a huge boon to harper's ferry but i don't think it's a a, a statewide um it's not on the scale that we can aspire for we can aspire for more mm -hmm. uh, on a bigger scale is what i'm trying to say i don't want to uh, act like it's not a, a major accomplishment it's very good but we could do more and bigger pasha majdi is our guest here he is currently a jefferson county commissioner running for uh, election he was appointed he's running for election so you don't technically call it re-election out of the harper's ferry uh, district pasha what else is on your agenda of things you'd like to see accomplished if you are to get another term as a jefferson county commissioner one thing i alluded to earlier we have to set up a government we did that we brought in um, an excellent county administrator but uh, she needs a number two uh, who's not there right now that seat is still vacant that's a chief financial officer we don't have a cfo uh, we're trying to hire one right now we've Put it out to bid we're accepting applications but we had some major problems with our budget over the past year i came in we and heard. uh yeah <laughs> I, I i used some harsh language told people this is uh, un unsatisfactory and you're going to have to step it up and balance the budget we did balance the budget this year but we it was, found the four million we did we okay. did but uh what happened was last year they were raiding the rainy day fund without telling the public hey we intend to raid the rainy day fund so it's not illegal per se you're allowed to do that and county commissions do that all the time. That's what a rainy day fund is for, for a rainy day. You, it's there to use it. But you're supposed to tell the public, hey, we have a major problem. We're going to dip into these funds. That never happened because it was, I think it was happening unwittingly. That's not how you run a budget. Because at the time you you were in flux with your chief financial officer and your county administrator? With our chief financial officers, plural. I think we had three or four over the span of a year. Mm -hmm. And without getting into names, you know, a lot of people were coming in and resigning quickly because they found the work environment to be uh, just. Uh, I'm told it was hostile. It was hostile, right? So we, we've turned that around, thankfully. Now we're in a position to hire a CFO who's going to make sure that never happens again. If we have a stable county budget, we can focus on positive things like how do we grow the county without just with a vision, a vision for tourism, instead of just sitting back and letting it happen and having housing development after housing development after housing development that gets us deeper and deeper into the tax hole. The candidates for commission in Jefferson County, uh, when I speak to them either on the record or off the record, uh, seem to, be, to divide clearly over the Jackson and Krause issues as support Jackson and Krause, don't support Jackson and Krause. Where are you on that, Pasha? Uh, I've, I've never taken a position on that. Um, I think the the whole series of events was unfortunate, and it's time to turn the page and move forward. Will Do you anticipate any issues like that developing again based on who might win elections and how they viewed those two commissioners? If you 
refuse to attend meetings and say I'm going to um, deny quorum to the uh, commission, uh, that's against the law. And uh, it, to me, it doesn't seem very discretionary. When you read the code, it's pretty straightforward. But um, I don't know if there's going to be enough commissioners who would take that perspective to deny quorum effectively. I mean, you could see somebody choosing uh, to boycott as some sort of protest. I think people in elected office around the country are starting to get activism and uh, holding elected office confused. Uh, there's a lot of political activism these days. Hold up a sign, do a march, uh, walk around, uh, sing slogans, and it's effective. And you can have uh, cameras, you can get on YouTube, you get clicks. It, it works. I get it. I get why political activism is, is popular these days. But there's a very big difference between activism and actually sitting in the chair where you're making decisions. Who are you trying to lobby? Are you lobbying yourself? I, I don't get that. Solar. Let's talk solar in Jefferson sure. County. We talked to uh, Michael Mood yesterday and got his thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. And it's not popular in your county, at least among some. Mm -hmm. It seems to be popular among those who own a lot of land and want to make some money from it. How do you justify personal property rights with what the residents are objecting to around it? Well, the personal property rights go to the corner of the property. Outside of that, now if you're affecting other people's property, then it's an issue. So if you have environmental concerns, if you have runoff, if you're causing pollution into a neighbor's property, that's, that's not your property right to do that. So um, I would start with foreign ownership of companies. That's my number one issue. If we have a Chinese solar company that's getting access to the grid through Jefferson County, I think that's a huge problem. Uh, so I want to look at that. Can we limit foreign ownership in some way? Second would be the runoff issue that I just mentioned. And then third, it's what everybody's talking about. What's what's the comprehensive plan here? We have a comprehensive plan in, in Jefferson County. Every county does it. It sets a vision for the future of the county. Is the comprehensive plan that we're going to have solar all over? I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I think that's going to have a negative impact on wildlife and the green, beautiful vistas that you have of Jefferson County that brings in tourists. So I think if your comprehensive plan is we're just going to put solar everywhere, that's a problem. On the other hand, if we keep our beauty, that attracts tourism, which is what we should be doing. That's that's what Jefferson County should be about. On uh, Matt, maybe you know this as the county attorney, as the ordinance is, w was approved. If I own a farm, can I put solar panels up to the border of my farm, or are there setback regulations that are in place with this? I I don't know. I can speak to that actually. Yeah, Pasha. Uh, the there was a draft uh, where it was two hundred fifty feet. And some people met with solar lobbyists, and then they decided it should be 50 feet. Who are those people? Uh, you'd have to look it up. But I can tell you they're the same people who blame me for solar. So um, I just think the whole thing is really uh, silly. Well, uh, so do you know who those people are and you don't want to say? Is that what you're saying? I'm you not have to going look to it say, up? right. Were they elected officials? Uh, they were elected officials at the time, right. Oh, they're not currently elected officials? Correct. Would that so, include Jackson and Krause? I don't know. Somebody's got to Google it. But the point is, if you're, if you're going to write the ordinance over three years— and then blame somebody else for it, uh, and you were in the room negotiating the factors. I mean, I just think that's cheesy. I wasn't even on the commission when this was taking place, uh, and instead they said, you know, oh, Pasha's uh, part of uh, this, that, and the other uh, secret deals. I wasn't even on the commission. Mm -hmm. And In fact, some of the people who are uh, the loudest critics now were the ones writing it the whole time. Um, you can just read Spirit of Jefferson or, or – Google the archives of WRNR and listen to the radio interviews, and people were cheering. They're on the front page of the paper, and then when it became unpopular, they started to blame other people. Uh, that's not the way I do things. If, I'm, if I make a mistake on the commission, I'll say, hey, folks, this needs to be improved. I'm responsible for it. We're going to listen to you and make it better. That's how I would have approached that situation. Mr. Gilstrap. I want to drill down a little bit on foreign ownership of things. So if Everything else worked out right, irrespective of what the voters, let's say the voters' attitudes shift. Would you object to an IKEA being built in Je Jefferson County? Oh, foreign yeah, I had never considered that. I was actually talking about foreign ownership with respect to the industry that has access to the grid. So an IKEA it would, would be irrelevant to what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm just talking about uh, solar or any other energy producing uh, industry that has access to the grid. I, in particular, I'm concerned about Chinese solar. Okay, how about Chinese ownership of a farm? If if it's a 500 acre farm and they wanted to somebody wanted to sell that to a Chinese farm company, would you have a problem with that? 
I would, but for different reasons. Um, I'm not sure if I can limit that. I think you can limit access to the grid for security reasons. Politically, I don't like Chinese ownership of West Virginia lands because I think West Virginia is generating them. And I'm also concerned about some sort of uh, long-term global play that the Chinese are making to own agricultural producing lands all over the world to affect the, suit, the food supply and have control over it. So is that, I guess what I'm trying to drill down on is, is, is there, is it legislation at, at the local level? I'm not sure, but, but the, are you proposing legislation to, would you like to see legislation passed at some level that would limit foreign ownership of West Virginia land? Specifically that, uh, act, has access to the grid. That's the issue that I'm really. So that's the on. key point. Yes, is, is the electrical. No, not generally speaking. I haven't considered it. Generally speaking, I'm glad you brought it up. That's a great question to consider. I haven't thought about that. Maybe some folks down in Charleston have, but I'm particularly concerned about Chinese solar companies. But if GE, I don't know if they do that kind of thing, but it, it, an American company wanted to put in a solar farm, less objection. Yes. Okay. Matt, do you have a question? No, I just I think that's interesting. Um, it's a would be sort of a taking. You're limiting someone's ability to sell their property based on who the buyer is. So, I, I'm just I'm just kind of working through the legal mechanics in my head of mm -hmm. how that would work. Yeah, I, I see your point. I think preventing it outright through an ordinance might be what you're talking about an illegal taking. But I think you can also have some sort of screening process to see if there's a security concern with access to the grid. And I think that would be appropriate. And it's not in the ordinance right now as it's written. Yeah, I, I'll ask you about, uh, and I'm just going to tee it up, uh, impact fees. There's there's a lot of discussion about that. I think mm -hmm. they're under current review right now. Yes. Uh, if you'd just like to talk about that. Yeah, I seconded the motion. It came from Commissioner Tab. I think they should be looked at. Impact fees are a way to have development pay its own way. Well, ho hold on. Can I? There seems to be a lot of confusion. Uh, People believe that impact fees in Jefferson County were reduced to a dollar. I think for education, right. But that's not everything. Not everything, no. What are the buckets that impact fees fund right now? Well, we've got impact fees that, that fund our public safety services, our emergency services, et cetera. We also have an ambulance fee on top of that. And I think um, across the board, they should be... Uh, and those were never reduced. Um, I don't know if they were never reduced, but I haven't voted to reduce them, no. Okay. Yeah, and I think they should be, all of them should be reviewed for an increase because I think it's just a fair and appropriate way to have growth paid for. If we have people moving into the county and we need to hire more sheriff's deputies, uh, we have to have more emergency services, how are we going to pay for that? I think as the growth comes, it should pay for its own way. But uh, the other big issue is, and I read this in the paper recently, we actually have in some cases declining enrollment in schools, which is not intuitive to me. I don't see why that's the case, but I'm, if, that's, if those are the facts, those are the facts. So as we were debating this at the commission, the point was raised, well, you can't raise an impact fee on schools, or I should say for schools, if the enrollment is declining. It and might be declining because of uh, people going to tr uh, private schools. Right, that could be it. That could be it, more yeah. school choice. Pasha, how do people find out more about your campaign for the Jefferson County Commission? Pasha Majdi for West Virginia. Simple as it sounds. That's right. Hey, good to see you again. Thanks. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Pasha will be at our candidate forum as well. We'll be doing two of those, October 15 and October 22.